to answer the living i must live in oh lord jesus we are not ignorant of the fact that we slept like other people who were unable to have the privilege of seeing another newborn day but here we are you made us to wake up with the vitality and strength in us above all your mercy brought us before your awesome and glorious presence for us to start the day with you father we thank you we worship you we adore you we magnify your holy and mighty name lord jesus even as we have come this hour, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, let our minds, our soul and spirit, Father, Lord, be connected, my Lord, my Father, with you, that our coming Amen. before you this morning will never be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, your word said in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 21, He said, for you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent, and you have revealed it unto the pearls. Even so, O Father, for it is pleasing in your sight. Thank you, O Lord Jesus. For making us, my Lord, my Father, for bringing your word, my Lord, my Father, to us every day in this mountain. For revealing the truth of your word unto us, my Lord, my Father. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you all that glory and honor. Father, Lord, even as we are part, my Lord, my Father, tell the Lord to look into your word again by your mercy. Father, Lord, may you give us the understanding of your word. That is the King of all glory. We surely, my Lord, my Father, germinate and bear a positive fruit in our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every power that's out of you, my Lord, my Father, every mind wandering spirit, that spirit that will give wrong interpretation of your ways to your children, Father Lord, we bind and cast them away out of our midst in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The spirit of my God, may you come and take over. Come and take over. I step back that you step forward. Come Amen. and speak your word unto us, that at the end, the name of Almighty God shall be glorified and magnified. Amen. In Jesus Christ's holy name. We have all prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. This morning, by the mercy and the grace of Almighty God, uh, we have a word from God. God that has made it possible for me and you to see another new born day. So please, I therefore enjoin us to open our Bible uh, to the book of Romans being a place in the Bible that almost all of us we are familiar with. Romans chapter number 12. I'm going to take our reading from verse 1 to 2 as short as it is. The word of God is powerful. Romans chapter 12. I take our reading from verse 1 to 2. And the Bible said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renew of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, conformity will render our body, we render our service unacceptable before God. So that is why, my beloved brother, 
the caption of this short word of exhortation this morning is the spirit of conformity an enemy of our soul spirit of conformity an enemy of my soul of your soul beloved conformity in this context is that behavior in accordance with socially accepted norms behavior in accordance with socially accepted conventions even though it is not right even though it is not true but because it is widely accepted you keep doing that is what conformity to conform to one another's pattern when in reality you know is against the world and the commandment of god because you have decided to conform you do what they are doing after all, other people are doing it you say what they say forgetting that the word of god told me and you in the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 he said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the what? To the use of a defile that it may minister grace unto the hearers. But because you have decided to be like your friends, after that are my friends, they say it, they do it, you join forgetting what the word of God has said concerning his children. Because we conform, we wear what they wear outside. Just because it is the popular norm, but you know it is ungodly. You dress like the person dress. We do all manner of things that they do outside knowing fully well that it is not supposed to be so. So I have to say, brethren, that a conformist is therefore someone who is afraid to be different. That Christian, that so professed Christian, who is afraid to be different, who is afraid to stand out for the truth of the word of God, in the environment you may find yourself you shy away or feel the need to be like everyone else because you follow the multitude you are now a conformist beloved this opening scripture romans 12 verse 1 that we just read is a short but a most necessary injunction especially in the life wherein me and you find ourselves today because there are all manner of what there are all manner of lifestyle that many people today including christians have joined in why because it is widely accepted as what is what what is raining it is widely accepted as the norm of the day but if that one person if that particular person if that christian if that one that calls himself and self a christian if you are not in spirit such lifestyle is our arch enemy that is detrimental to our souls that lifestyle that you have decided to conform with, to compromise with, is your act enemy targeting your soul. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That life of complacency, that life of complacency is gradually diverting our attention, especially Christian, is diverting our attention and focus as believers 
from pressing and striving into the rest of our Father in heaven through holy and righteous living. The word of God made us to understand in the book of Luke, Luke chapter number 39, sorry, Luke 13, Luke chapter 13, from verse 24 to 25, Luke 13, 24 to 25, where the Bible enjoined me and you. He said we should strive to enter in at the straight gate. We should strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, we seek to enter and shall not be able. 25. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand out and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. I now believe that this Bible verse is referring to people that have known God. He's not talking to unbelievers, he's not talking to pagans. Because pagans will not say, Lord, Lord. But because you have decided to conform, because you have decided to compromise, the Bible says that the, old, the master will not shut the door, even though you know me before. But because sometime or somewhere along your life, you decided to compromise and conform. That's why the door is shut against you. Brethren, this spirit of conformity, this spirit of conformity, to make it virtually difficult to distinguish among Christians who is truly on the Lord's side, even though it is one of ourselves. The spirit of conformity today has made it difficult to be able to distinguish those people that are truly on the Lord's side and people on the world's side. Because you come to find out that most things that the people on the world's side do, people that say that they're on the godly side, they are into it as well. Why? Because of what spirit of conformity. The word of God asks us a question. We in particular, Christians, believers inclusive. The word of God asks us a question. We that believe in the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the epitome of holiness and righteousness? He asks us this pertinent question in the book of Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. If you take a reading from verse fourteen, Second Corinthians six, from verse fourteen, the Bible says, "Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers." Now the question now begins. It begins to draw a line between two group of people. Or two group of individuals, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? That's distinction. And what communion had light with darkness? Verity. Fifteen. And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? See the two groups. 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. And what in them? I will be their God. And they shall be my people. 17. Wherefore, come out among them. In other words, do not conform with them. Do not compromise with them. And be ye separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. By doing so, I will receive you. 18. Our last verse here. He said, And will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. By the time you separate yourself, by the time you make a distinction, by the time you know that no matter the pleasure of life, no matter what you are passing through or what is passing through you, I will not throw in the towel. I will not compromise my faith. Why? Because you really remember, and the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, 
He said, He that endures to the end, that same person shall what shall be saved. In other ways, he that stood his or her ground, irrespective of circumstances, irrespective of situations, you hold to your faith in holiness and righteousness. You refuse to compromise. You chase away the spirit of humanity. No matter, no matter the stones that the devil is throwing, on that last day, that soul must be saved. That soul must be in the kingdom of God. But if in the midst, if in the journey of life, you decided, like the last wife, to look at the back, you decided to begin to conform, you begin to compromise, already that soul is doomed. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Beloved, the inability of anyone that is looking unto his or her maker to see him in glory on the last day, the inability of that one person to draw or to bring a separation from godliness and worldliness, then that sinful and ungodly lifestyle will definitely cause you to be separated from the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible has made us know where we just read. He said, what communion, what communion have God with Belial? What communion have righteousness with unrighteousness? So if we think that we can be on the face, like it has been rightly said in this mountain, in this race, there is no chance of sitting in the fence. I don't support. I don't join them. That you must be on one side. So failure to do that, that soul is already dancing to the hand of Satan. Beloved, in the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, from verse 15 to 17, the Bible enjoined me and you. He said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why? If any man love the world more than God, I paraphrase, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in her. 16. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. 17. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abide forever. And the question, why must we now put our life in danger when we know very well that those things that made us to conform, to compromise, the Bible said that they will pass away. They will definitely leave us one day. But he that doeth the word of God, he that doeth the will of God, he that refuses to compromise or to conform, that person will live forever. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Beloved, there are great dangers in conforming to the patterns of this sinful and passing away world. There is what a great danger in the life of every true believer. There is a great danger. There is a danger, very big one, in the life of any true believer who wants to walk to meet God in glory on the last day. There is a danger. So we must be very, very careful. Why? Because the life of conformity, the life of compromise, will make you to forsake, we make you to forget in a jiffy that undiluted truth of the word of God that once made you to cry for God when the message of the cross, when you had it. And because of that, you begin to cry. You begin to give your life unto Jesus. You know whom you are years back. I know whom I am years back. But that truth of the world that touched me and you, that made us to cry unto him, that made us to give our life unto him, that made us to begin to retest our step. By the time we join the league of conformists, that same word that made us to cry and to give our life unto him will mean nothing to us again. Why? Because conformity has set in. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Little wonder, Apostle Paul admonished Timothy, his young associate, not to compromise his faith and teachings 
if he must end well, if he must survive the euphoria, if he must survive the trials, if he must survive you know, the enticements of Satan in this sinful world, that is an admonition. That's an advice he gave to the young Timothy in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. He said, let no man despise that you, Timothy, as the word of God is telling me and you today. Let no man despise our youth, but be thou an example of believers. This God brings to my notice when this one was coming to me. So a true believer must be known in our world. He said, be example of a true believer. A true believer must be known through the ways of our mouth. Through the ways of our mouth. Just like that, that, the, the, the word of God made me and you to understand in that book of uh, uh, Ephesians that we read that no evil communication will ever proceed out of our mouth. If it does, we are conforming to the patterns of the world. The word that is supposed to proceed from our mouth, the Bible is saying that it must be such a good word that shall be used in edifying. A word that will bring encouragement. A word that will make a sister or a brother that is trying to turn the tower and say, brother, sister, do not give in. We are almost there. You are not alone. Even though you are in the valley, remember there is a man called the Lily of the Valley. A word that will show that we are true children of God. He said, be example of believers in war, in conversations. So a true believer will also be known through our conversations. That brother, that sister that normally call you on phone, what does he always speak with you? Is this a bad person to bring that man, that woman down, to say, hey, look at you, look at that. Look at them. They are talking to us. Do you hear about this? Have you heard about this? Be a good example, both in our conversation, both in charity, the way we show love, not the love of mere words. The love that comes from our heart. Not the love that we are doing because we are expecting something in return. Not the love that we show because we are expecting a cheap popularity. I pray, God Almighty, we have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, be example in spirit. A true child of God must always be in spirit must always see the things of God in spirit. Be in faith and in purity. This is what an admonishment that Apostle Paul gave to young Timothy. For him not to conform, we must stand out. We must, do, we must stand out in our dealings. We must stand out in as much as we profess to be on the Lord's side. And he went further. He did not end there. He went further. To admonish him. The Timothy that has been admonished today is me and you. He went to admonish him in 2 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, where he said, Find the good fight of faith, Timothy. Find the good fight of faith. Pray. Find the good, find good of faith. You that is hearing me, lay hold on eternal life, where unto thou art also called, and have professed a good profession before. We must not throw in the towel. May we must not conform because what we are waiting until God to do for us is not yet come. And because we want to do it like the way other people do it, we must not do that. We must not because we want to achieve our personal goal. We begin to take the wrong way of life. We must not. The spirit of conformity is an arch enemy of our soul. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In this race that me and you were in, there are pressures as well as there are enemies of our faith and soul. There are all enemies and pressures of our faith, of our soul, who are eagerly waiting in hiding to see me and you falter. Even those who will call our friends, they know you are now a believer. You are into righteousness. 
even though they laugh with you, they call you every day. They are waiting in eager for you for you to, to see you and to see me conform, to see us falter or to see us compromise. They say, <laughs> when they now mention their word, they say, I'll leave him. It's what the after all, everything we do, we know her. It does not matter about taking away joy, we know them. They are waiting in eager expectation to see us falter, to see us compromise, to see us conform before they begin to laugh and make mockery of the God we serve. That's the reason the book of Hebrew enjoin me and you for us to be resolute, for us to be focused in this heavenly race if we must end it well. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 1, that's where that admonition comes. He said, wherefore, please, we also are compassed, we are surrounded about with so great a cloud of witnesses because we must know that in this heavenly race, we are being surrounded, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let us lay aside every way and the same which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before me and you. Praise Pastor Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. That no matter what we are saying, no matter how rough that the road may be, there is no need to conform. There are people who are waiting outside there to make mockery of our God and to make mockery of our faith. We must not because of where we find ourselves and we will go to conform. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10, it said, if you and me, if we fight in the day of adversity, it said what? Our strength is small. If we faint at the day of adversity, our strength is small. Brethren, we, as the children of light, we are supposed to be transformist and not a conformist. In the beginning, we have said what a conformist is. We are supposed to be what? A, what? a transformist. A transformist has the courage to say no to an abomination. A transformist has the courage to what? To deny anything sinful. A conformist, his or her exemplary lifestyle helps and encourage other people around him to fight for the pleasure of conformity. That, that person is what a transformist. Joshua is a good example of what of a transformist leader. When the people of Israel were not steadfast in their relationship and worship with God, when they were dancing front and back. In the morning, they believe in this God. They will sing hallelujah for the one that brought us out of, out, of, out of bondage. In the afternoon, because of one need or the other, they will begin to sing another song. Joshua told them categorically clear. In the book of Joshua 24, it is good we read it. Joshua stood up. He did not conform with them. He stood up as a transformist leader. He told them in the book of Joshua 24, from verse 14 to 15. He said, now therefore, that is Joshua speaking, now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the floor. Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the floor, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as of me, that is a performance leader, as of me and my household, we will serve the Lord. He refused to do what? To compromise. He refused to do what? To conform. He stood as a performance leader. That is what we are supposed to do in the name of God. Praise to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, Love it. Finally, a conformist. A conformist will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, I was an ardent and a committed Christian uh, when I was in Nigeria, when I was in social social country, but because of the circumstances, because of Europe, and that is why I mean in Europe, you are a conformist. And a conformist can never inherit the kingdom of God. He can never. We cannot because where we find ourselves. Because we change location, the word of God never changed. 
You don't, don't you may change the location. That does not mean we have to change our faith. We must stood our ground. Oh, I was an addict, a Christian. I was committed Christian before. It is not a yasik to enter the kingdom of God. Rather, any of such person that lives such lifestyle, you are playing with your soul. In case you don't know, book of Ezekiel made us to understand, I'll end with this Bible verse. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 24, where he said, but when the righteous turn it away for his righteousness, the one who said, I was hurt before for God, I paraphrase, the one who said, I was once, I was once a prayer leader when I was in Nigeria. He said, when the righteous turn it away for his righteousness, and committed iniquity, and do it according to all the abominations that the wicked man do it, shall I heal him of the question? And the same Bible answer. He said, all his righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned. He shall be wiped away like a duster. In his trespass that he had trespassed, in his sin that he had sinned, in them that he died. So, when as we start on this race, if for any reason we begin to do as others do, we begin to conform, the Bible says, even the one we do before shall be wiped away. You see how serious it is. That is why, brethren, this morning, I need us to use a few minutes, a minute or two, to cry unto God and say, Lord Jesus, every spirit of conformity, maybe it has not manifested in my life, but it will manifest in fact as life goes on. But Lord, you are the one that knows the opening the secret. You are the one that knows the end from the beginning. Any spirit of conformity that will make you to be in the tower, that will make you to begin to conform, Allah, my Father. Do this, Allah, that did not live for me. But Allah, let that spirit die out of my life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to die, 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 the grace for me to be resolute, the grace for me to be focused irrespective of what I'm passing through, irrespective of what I am seeing right now. But Lord, the grace for me to stand still, my Lord, my Father. But Lord, to follow you in honest and righteousness until I meet you on the last day in glory. But Lord, I receive that grace this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's Amen. 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 In Jesus Christ, we are praying. Are you out there? You're not giving your life to Jesus Christ. You are conforming your soul. The spirit of conformity has entered into you, and that is exactly the scheme of Satan targeting your soul. You have the great opportunity for you to come out from that very spirit. Spirit of conformity is an arch enemy to our soul. So you are there, you have heard the word of God, you want to run away from that spirit, please repeat this short prayer of confession and mercy after me. Say, Lord Jesus, having heard your word this morning, Father, I come against every spirit of conformity, every spirit of compromise. Lord Jesus, as your word have come to me this hour, Lord Jesus, I totally surrender my life unto you. Lord, I plead with you to come into my life and be my Lord and personal Savior. Cleanse my heart. Lord Jesus, 
Let there be a purification. Sanctify me, O Lord Jesus. Take away every spirit that makes me to compromise, every spirit that makes me to conform to the pattern of this world. Father Lord, today, as I confess you to be my Lord and personal Savior, give me the grace to stand strong, to be resolute, to focus, to look unto you as my Lord and personal Savior, Lord Jesus. I receive that grace this morning. In your infinite mercy, let my name be blotted away from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul from damnation in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Uh, Amen. I want to tell you that heaven is rejoicing over your soul. Heaven is really rejoicing over your soul. And we, in this matter of Almighty God, will rejoice with you. And it's our earnest prayer that God Almighty, His infinite mercy, will uphold each and every one of us and chase away every spirit of conformity out of our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, Immortal Holy Ghost, Father Lord, I thank you, I worship you, I adore you. Thank you, my Lord, my Father, for your word that has come to me and my brethren this morning. So, thank you, Lord. Lord, oh Lord Jesus, Father Lord, I pray, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, Father Lord, the grace, my Lord, my Father, for your word to be planted in the, in the heart, Lord Jesus, for your word, my Lord, my Father, to be a positive fruit in our life, for your word to chase away every spirit of compromise and conformity. Father Lord, we receive that grace this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, say, Father, Jesus, Father Lord, anything, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, make this word to stand against me on my bed on last day. Father Lord, let your mercy always speak and stand for us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Any error, any mistake, my Lord, my Father, I've been recorded by the cross of darkness, Lord Jesus. Father Lord, let me be cancelled by your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Ashley. Jesus Christ, holy name, we have all prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Yes, Master Jesus Christ. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. Over to you, man of God. I'm sorry for taking your time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.